What's up everybody, it's your boy Marsman here, and welcome to Marsman Gaming. In this video, I review God of War Ragnarok. Ever since the official release date was revealed back in July of this year, everyone was excited to see how the sequel to the 2018 Game of the Year would perform. Up until this point, most gaming critics, including myself, were concerned that we did not see much gameplay of this new title this close to release. That being said, with the official release of the game, all the concerns I felt had just disappeared. God of War Ragnarok released with no issues, and became the fastest selling PlayStation exclusive to this date in its entire history, even beating Last of Us Part Two. With reports that God of War Ragnarok being the final game in its current storyline, most people feel bittersweet if this is truly the end of the series. Does the story of the legendary God of War and his son meet the standard of the previous title? Why is this game so beloved by most gamers? Should God of War Ragnarok win Game of the Year? In my review, I give the good, the bad, the ugly, and answer these questions in my final verdict. This is Marsman Gaming. Let's start off with the good. Overall, the gameplay of God of War Ragnarok is very top-notch. Very smooth in its movements, making you feel fluid throughout. Basic mechanics are very solid between the dodging, counters, and classic hack and slash I'm used to from the classic God of War titles of the past. With the use of the DualSense controller, I truly believe that the experience of gameplay was adjusted. The haptic feedback increases the level of immersion by feeling different movements, whether it's moving through snow, climbing mountains, or using the new grapple system. The movements feel adjusted because you're playing on PlayStation 5, and with these new features, it's definitely making an impact. But the better question is, I wonder if it's the same way for the PlayStation 4, and I'm not sure it would match that same level. When it comes to the combat, the Leviathan Axe is as beefy as I remember it to be, freezing every opponent in your path, creating a good mix in ranged and close combat. The Return of the Classic Blades of Chaos is still my favorite just because it is iconic in its design and usage. The new introduction of the Drapnir Spear does provide a mixture of axe and blade. Having the ability to be thrown as well as detonated adds new functionality. It seems like Santa Monica Studios wanted to take the gameplay mechanics from the previous title and also just make some slight adjustments to make it feel new. These weapons can be used in any sort of scenario and they all kind of fit Kratos' play style. Even if it's nearly identical to the previous game, if it's not broken, you don't need to fix it. The biggest strength of this game has to be the narrative and the character. God of War Ragnarok fully immerses you into the story through its excellent writing. Every scene and setting was written specifically to impact the player and bring out the emotions as we progress through the story. You feel invested to continue the journey and you want to see what happens next. The narrative is direct and does a great job providing enough information that is easy to understand what is going on and it doesn't confuse the player. For those of you that have played the previous God of War, you will definitely feel more emotionally connected to this game because it does have several callbacks to the previous titles. The mixture between main missions and side quests is also very balanced. The main plot only gets expanded through the completion of side stories that will give more context to this great story. The story follows themes such as parenthood, defying fate, the impact of revenge, and the pain of losing bonds. I truly believe that the art of storytelling is being able to convey these types of themes in a meaningful and impactful way. Those games that can do this and make you feel emotionally invested while experiencing how it unfolds are considered the best of the best. Following the story of Kratos and Atreus unfolds extremely intense situations and you only feel the emotional impact of these themes as you continue all the way to the end of the nearly 60 hour playtime. Truly, you have to respect Santa Monica Studios for their craft and you have to admit that you are looking forward to what they make next. The character development in this game has been extremely impressive and you have to give credit to Santa Monica Studios for being able to accomplish this feat. This title provides us with the most diverse set of characters with differing perspectives and goals they wish to achieve. Kratos is truly a dynamic character as you look at his journey from being the god-killing warrior to the father he is in this game. Even if he does not give you many words, he shows you emotion by what he says in the situation he is in. This game showed me more about Kratos being a man with differing types of emotions than I ever expected. This is probably the best form of Kratos I think I've ever seen. This game had several returning and new characters introduced as well. Overall, they hit the mark on nearly all of them. Atreus being the young adult that is looking to find answers as well as accomplish his goals as they progress towards Ragnarok. Freya is bent on revenge on both Kratos and Odin. Thor, Odin, Heimdall, and Tyr all seem well fleshed out and each have their motives and perspectives. I think the antagonists of the Asir gods are definitely way more interesting and expressive than I think of anything we've seen in the series to this point. Odin and Thor are nowhere near the characters we know from the Marvel Universe. Odin is bent on accomplishing his goals any means necessary. Thor is a brutish character that on the outside seems to have things figured out but he is deeply dealing with major trauma from his past and 
from the death of his sons. Good character writing is what makes people remember these types of games for the long haul, and Santa Monica Studios did a great job in doing that for this title. Possibly an overlooked feature, I believe that God of War Ragnarok did a great job in its art design and music. What's interesting is that the several locations carry over from the previous title, but due to film or winter, Midgard is covered with snow, making the large lake extremely made of ice. Alfheim is now a desert-covered area that is decimated by earthquakes and sandstorms. Most of the other realms relatively look the same, but graphically, they look stunning. This game includes three new realms to be explored. Mofterheim, the land of the dwarves, which is more tropical, shows us technological advances that were created far beyond anything seen so far. Vanaheim, which shows off beautiful aspects of flora, bringing out major colors and scenery. Lastly, we have Asgard, the land of the gods. Very different in what people may expect, but still has impressive art direction. Design and development of these art styles of these different worlds makes people want to explore all the way to the end. The music of God of War was extremely well done. The composer, Bear McGarry, really outdone all expectations with the level of emotion and intensity some of these tracks have. The scenes that are trying to convey a touching moment of Kratos reflecting on his past, there's a song that heightens that scene. Have an intense battle between two godlike figures about the brawl to the death? Don't worry, they got a song for that too. Every moment along the way, there's a track that really heightens the emotion of that situation and it really makes these scenes better. With the good, we have to talk about the bad. There's not really a lot of bad things I have to say about God of War Ragnarok, but one of the flaws I did see in my playthrough was the lack of variety between the combat, the weapons, and the enemies we face along the way. With as great of a game that God of War Ragnarok is, there are times where combat seems repetitive. But with the 60 hour game time God of War has, I was hoping for more variety in the combat scenarios or methods to face enemies. So only adding one new weapon from the previous game, I felt a little disappointed that I didn't have more ways to combat, especially with how well this game plays. The Leviathan Axe, Blades of Chaos, and the Doppner Spear are all great weapons, but for a sequel, I was really hoping for more ways to show my strength as a god killer. Similar to the combat, I felt like there needed to be more variety in the enemies we faced. Even though we face off against several factions or species of enemies throughout the game, I felt like all the enemies were lumped together in about four categories. Small, medium, large, and ranged. I could be fighting lizard people or soldiers of the gods, and they all match these four categories. I feel like there needs to be more variation, especially when you're facing off with different groups. With the gameplay being as good as it was, I was just hoping that I could have more variety in the enemies we face which would give these groups more character. God of War Ragnarok has both positives and negatives, but overall, it's a great game. The gameplay is smooth, and it really shows off the level of polish Santa Monica Studios has done to make this game feel as good as it does. Easily the best part has to be the narrative and characters. The story tackles many themes that most viewers can associate with, and nearly every scene made you feel the emotion with great dialogue, stunning visuals, and an amazing soundtrack. The Norse gods really had a great showing in this title, and the epic clashes between Kratos and Thor were truly awesome and fun to play through. At times, I felt that the weapons, combat, and enemies were repetitive, but these flaws weren't enough to damper my experience. Overall, I'm giving this game a 9.4 out of 10. God of War Ragnarok does something that most sequels have difficulty doing, expanding a story while also creating more intrigue about the lore making fans want more. We all knew that Santa Monica Studios was going to give us a great experience in this game, and even with that being the case, I was surprised with the level of how much fun I had playing this title. Kratos has the best character development in the entire series, and I feel like he deserves the ranking of being a legendary gaming character. It definitely meets the standard of the previous game, and according to some, it surpasses the God of War 2018. Whether you are a fan of the series or not, you have to recognize talent, and Santa Monica Studios establishes themselves as a next level developer. Does God of War deserve to win game of the year? I would be surprised if God of War didn't win this year, but to be honest, if God of War and Elder Ring are going head to head and either one of them win, I would be happy knowing that we have a great year of gaming with some legendary titles for us to play. For more gaming content, reviews, and live streams, come check out our channel on YouTube. This is Marsman from Marsman Gaming, signing off. Peace out, guys. <laughs>